All right, so we have talked about a variety of different techniques for creating features in hard surface geometry using mostly primitives and dynamesh. But now the question is, how do you put it all together? Like what's the, the middle steps between what we've talked about so far and something like this? It's probably the most important and powerful feature, in my opinion, that ZBrush has to offer, which is you can sculpt something fairly crudely like this and then use it as a scaffold for creating geometry. So a piece like this, for instance, you can maybe see the where it, where it came from, and I'll show you the, the intermediate process for creating something like this. But if we look at it, what we can see, it's actually a collection of some different things. Uh, if I go to auto groups, like these are our pieces, right? So we've got this simple piece here and this relatively simple piece. And if I hop out of dynamic subdivision, we can see what the actual low poly geometry looks like that goes into it. It's not really all that complicated, but it is through the dynamic subdivision. And then maybe there's a live Boolean, like right here is a live Boolean that's, that's chopping that little piece out there. So it's, it's a process of kind of layering these different features on top of each other to get something that feels very, very complex. When in, in, in reality, it's just a collection of kind of simple stuff all piled up. So this tutorial, assumes that you already have a, a, a base understanding of how to work with ZBrush in terms of to sculpt something like this, uh, just using the regular old brushes, you know, damn standard and MAH cut A and B, which are very useful. Uh, and I have a, a video that I'll include that will cover how that stuff works. But let's assume that we're kind of starting with something like this. I'm going to go ahead and just make this apply mesh 3D. And we'll just uh, make this little nose piece here. Well, we'll start with some of the, the underlying principles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to append a Z-sphere. Now, if you want to create geometry in ZBrush, Z-spheres are one of the primary ways of doing that. It's not the only way to do it, but it certainly uh, has a lot of utility in that department. And I have a few things that I've pulled out that are available here at the bottom of the UI. These are not by default uh, going to be visible, like if I have just a regular polymesh 3D selected, all that stuff goes away. You only have access to these things when you have a Z-sphere selected. And this menu here will change a little bit too, and that's where I pulled this stuff out. So if you go to Adaptive Skin, we can see here's our density, and it lights up our Dynamesh resolution. These are both critically important. And then with Topology, we're gonna have our Edit Topology, Select Topology, and Delete Topology. So we'll talk about what all this stuff does here. Uh, so with the Z-Sphere selected, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Edit Topology. And what this means is I can now click on any visible surface. I'm going to change my, or maybe I'll just change my color so it's a little easier to see. So now I can click on any surface and begin to create polygons. That is now a polygon. You got to have, you can have three to uh, uh, three edges. It doesn't have to be four, but it, you know if you can stay. With four, it's better. So you can see this one is red. That means the next place I start clicking, the next time I, I click on the surface, it's going to draw from the highlighted vertex here, like so. And now this one is highlighted, and so on and so forth. Now I just click there to close it, but it didn't actually update the uh, the uh, the selected vert for the next draw, and that's because it's kind of assuming that you want to draw in a uh, a ring like this, which is totally fine. So if you want to change the vert that is highlighted for the next one, you have two options. The first option is you click twice off of the mesh and then you can begin drawing wherever you want. And the other option is you just hold control and click on a vert. Right? So now I can continue on as I was. I just clicked this one because this one was still highlighted. So I wouldn't want to click this guy because that'll draw an edge from here to here, but I can click this one because there's already an edge there. So it's not going to put two edges in one, in one uh, spot. If I want to delete a vert, you just hold alt and click the vert. All this stuff, by the way, is in draw mode, which you can get to by tapping the Q key. So you just want to make sure that you're in regular old draw mode and you'll be able to add these verts. So you can see the verts now are highlighted, but not, uh, but there is one isn't selected. So I think if I start drawing, I'm going to get this, which is bad news, right? So if you don't have a vert selected to begin drawing from, it's going to basically 
grab the vert from the middle of the origin or the middle of the Z sphere, which is down here in this case, and that's going to be destructive. So like if that happens, just hit control Z, no big deal. And you can see this is highlighted in red because it doesn't really know what's going on. So I'm just going to, in this case, I'm just going to hold control and click on this vert and we can continue on as we were. So now that we've got that, what are we going to do to convert this into geometry? If I tap solo, you can see it's just edges floating in space. Well, I can hit the A key. A is going to preview the geometry. And you can see it looks like a nightmare. ZBrush did not used to have this as the default behavior for creating geometry from Retop, but it is now the default behavior, which is why I have pulled out Dynamesh Resolution. We don't want this to be Dynameshed at all. If I turn on the polyframe, you can see it's just an absolute mess. There's nothing you can do with this geometry. I, it's, it's silly that this is the default. So I'm going to tap A to hop out. This is the A will toggle between, uh, it's the poly mesh preview is what they call it. It's, it's not actual geometry. You can sculpt on it, but as soon as you hit A, it's going to go back to the retopology uh, wireframe. So all I got to do is here in Dynamesh resolution is just drag that to zero. And now when I tap A, you can see I get nice, clean poly geo, which is what I want, but it's doing one thing that I don't want. It's subdividing it one time, even though I didn't ask it to. And that's what this density slider is here. So if I drop this to one, you can see this now updates. So now with the Dynamesh resolution zeroed out and density set to one, I get a one-to-one -one between what I've described with my retop and what I'm getting with my low poly. So let's turn solo off. A couple things to keep in mind with the uh, retop here. If I want to get rid of an edge, I need to just put a vert in the middle of that edge and then I can delete it. But there's still a vert here and a vert here. So if I try to convert this into geometry, it's going to put that edge right back because it understands that I've got these two verts. So you've actually just got to, in this case, go ahead and get rid of that. You can totally connect it like that. Like I said, triangles are not illegal here. Uh, it's totally fine. And depending on what you want to do with it, you could leave it in there. In this case, I, you know, this is, isn't a real thing, but uh, you will get artifacts in your high poly geometry if you have triangles in the wrong places. And we can kind of talk about what makes sense for where to put your triangles if you have to put a triangle somewhere. As, we, as we're working through this, I'm sure I'll think of, uh, of scenarios. General rule of thumb is if there is any kind of change in, in curvature, you don't want to put the triangle where the surface is curving. You want to kind of keep it where it's flat. The other thing that's really important is I mentioned that if you wanted to start drawing uh, from a from a different vert that is highlighted, you just hold control and you can click on that vert. But what does control do? Control masks everything. So sometimes I'm just going to go ahead and mask it. You can see there's no visual change, but now if I try to move it, the uh, normal stuff here applies. Q is going to add, W is going to move. We don't have a rotate and a scale because um, it's just, uh, so I guess not all the regular stuff, but, but draw and move apply. But you can see I'm clicking on this and it's not updating. And the reason for that is it has been masked. So if you've ever, if you're ever clicking around and you realize you can't change the position, by the way, it's super easy to change the position. I guess I should have mentioned that too. You can just uh, tap the W key to enter move mode. And as you move it, it'll resnap to wherever you are in the surface. So that's really, really useful. Uh, but yeah, if it's not updating, it might be because you have incidentally masked it and it's all just uh, doing what it's supposed to do according to the instructions that you inadvertently gave it, just to mask it. So anyway, if you want to unmask, you just drag off uh, holding control and now everything is going to be available to you. So we'll get into a little more detail about how to build something like this in the next video.